Good afternoon to all you listeners and viewers out there. I've been a little behind the times. I got a different computer with Windows 8.1. Uh, I've been familiarizing myself with all these new functions on it and some of my equipment that I used on my prior system does not seem to be compatible with Windows 8.1. So I'm, I'm just now getting back up to speed. Uh, so what I'm showing you here today is a little bit about a possible El Nino and we'll read through and I'll let you see this video that's just over here on the site. It says every 10 days the NASA and the French Space Agency Jason 2 satellite maps all the world's oceans and monitors the changes in the sea. And lately they've been seeing something in the Pacific and it reminds them and looks like something from 1997. Uh, and they're going to be talking about El Nino, possibly. And the pattern of the surface heights, sea surface heights, and temperatures has formed. And it looks similar to the way it looked in 1997. And that was uh, what it looked like slightly before we had a big El Nino. And I can't say for sure it's going to develop or how big it could be, but what they're seeing supports a watch for a possible development of El Nino. Now, these two phenomena, the Kelvin waves and El Nino, are, they're linked by wind, and the trade winds blow from east to west. west pushing sun-warm surface waters toward Indonesia, and as a result, the sea level near Indonesia is normally 45 cm higher than it is near Ecuador. And they call that the warm pool. It's the largest reservoir of warm water on the planet. And sometimes the trade winds falter for a while, days or weeks. Some of the excess sea level ripples back towards here in America, and that's a Kelvin wave. It's not unusual to see a couple every winter. So they're talking about the El Nino of 97 and 98 was a textbook example. And all that time we're getting data from Topex Poseidon, predecessor of Jason 2. And the sea surface map showed a whitish bump which indicated the sea level some 10 centimeters higher than usual moving along the equator from Australia to South America. And the same pattern is repeating this year in 2014. And over the next two to three months, it's going to be a little more clear whether these recent developments are the forerunner of a major El Nino or any at all. So here goes the video. And I'll let you... Check that out. El Nino is 2014, the new 1997, presented by Science at NASA. Every 10 days, the Jason 2 satellite maps the global ocean, monitoring changes in sea surface height a measure of heat in the upper layers of the water. Because our planet is more than 70% ocean, this information is crucial to global forecasts of weather and climate. Lately, Jason 2 has seen something brewing in the Pacific, and it looks a lot like 1997. A pattern of sea surface heights and temperatures has formed that reminds me of the way the Pacific looked in the spring of 1997, says Bill Patzer, a climatologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory that turned out to be the precursor of a big El Nino. We can't yet say for sure that an El Nino will develop in 2014, or how big it might be, cautions Mike McFadden of NOAA's Pacific Environmental Research Laboratories in Seattle. But the Jason 2 data support the El Nino watch issued last month by NOAA. What Jason 2 has been seeing is a series of Kelvin waves, massive ripples in sea level that travel across the Pacific from Australia to South America. 
Forecasters are paying close attention because these waves could be a herald of El Nino. The two phenomena, Kelvin waves and El Nino, are linked by wind. Pacific trade winds blow from east to west, pushing sun-warmed surface waters toward Indonesia. As a result, the sea level near Indonesia is normally 45 centimeters higher than it is near Ecuador. Researchers call that area the warm pool. It is the largest reservoir of warm water on our planet. Sometimes, however, trade winds falter for a few days or weeks, and some of that excess sea level ripples back toward the Americas. That's a Kelvin wave, says McFadden. It's not unusual to see a couple every winter. El Nino happens when trade winds falter, not just for days, but for many months. Then Kelvin waves cross the Pacific like a caravan, raising sea level and leaving warmer equatorial waters in their wake. The El Nino of 1997-98 was a textbook example, recalls Patzer. At that time, we were getting data from Topex Poseidon, a predecessor of Jason 2. Sea surface maps showed a whitish bump, indicating a sea level some 10 centimeters higher than usual, moving along the equator from Australia to South America. The same pattern is repeating in 2014, says McFadden. A series of Kelvin waves generated by localized west wind bursts in the western Pacific that began in mid-January 2014 are headed east. Excitement is building as a third weakening of the Pacific trade winds happened in mid-April. Ocean and atmospheric scientists at NOAA and NASA are carefully monitoring the Pacific trade winds. The tipping point for declaring a significant El Nino will be an even longer lasting, larger collapse in Pacific trade winds, possibly signaling a shift in weather all around our planet. It will become much clearer over the next two to three months whether these recent developments are the forerunner of a major El Nino, or any El Nino at all, says McFadden. Jason 2 is a marvelous Kelvin wave counter, adds Patzer, and it will tell the tale. For more news from the Pacific and other bodies of water around the solar system, stay tuned to science.nasa.gov. Well, we'll just have to see whether that's going to happen or not. Because we really, we don't know for positive, like they said. The time is going to tell. What we got also is we have some incoming objects. According to spaceweather.com. You know, what I notice, of course everybody else can see it, is on June the 8th. This one here is a, a you would be getting some small ones, you know, 40 meters and less, you know, something 100 meters or less for quite some time. And the ones that were, you know, a kilometer or more were way out there. So this is uh, you're fairly close, 3.3 lunar distances. But the size of it is substantially greater than what I've been keeping my eyes on, on what they put up on their incoming charts here, or passing flyby charts. So, I would keep my eyes, which is probably just going to uh, pass by and there'll be no anything from it. But I'm just bringing the point to view that this is the largest one that I can remember keeping a tab on. It's, it's come within a fairly good, you know, close distance uh, in quite some time. And they go on to say, well, they have a little article about your soul and max, and, and uh, they'll, they'll be talking about, uh, and this is from, 
the 20th of May, actually, a couple days ago. And they're talking about the solar max hasn't been as max as what we thought it would be in 2013. But uh, they also go to, to uh, talk about how the max could actually ramp up as we came through 2013 and entered into 2014. Uh, so you could possibly see some more action from the output of the sun. So today's article We're saying the quiet sun and there's very low chance of X flares today. And you have, of course, the meteor shower, from the debris stream 209P linear. And if they are correct, it's going to have 200 per hour. Saturday is going to be the best time to watch for them. And then they have a little article about it. The moon's going to pass through the debris zone also, they say. This is your fireballs. They're flying around everywhere. They've been reported. Again, we see the chart. And we will go ahead and while we're here, I'll bring it over to the 21st. Yesterday, and you can see what they said yesterday. The high latitude auroras are possible today. We're going to cross through a fold in the heliospheric heliospheric current sheet, solar sector boundary crossing. We pretty well have the same articles up here that we've seen that I just showed. The main point was about the El Nino because that can bring really crappy weather. A um, large portion of the country is in drought. You're going to probably see some ramp up of some storms. You know they'd use HARP. They direct the jet stream now. They direct storms wherever they want them. It's all admitted, documented. The technology is patented. And they use it. So you're you see what's going on with your food prices and everything at the store, especially your meat and your fruit and your vegetables. And you can expect that to continue. And that is not a normal thing. Some people say, well, that's to be expected. No, that's not to be expected. Not at the rate of percentage that it's climbing in the period of time that it's climbing. So they manipulate things they, as in their, their cabal of evil, runs the world for the control, for the domination of humanity. And we'll get back into humanity's domination by this cabal in my next video. So I wanted to put this out about El Nino, and we'll see where it goes from there. And God bless everyone. Get to know him if you don't. He wants to know you. You have the opportunity. You can never say that you have not had the opportunity when the time of each person's judgment comes. So I'll speak to all you friends pretty soon. I'll put together some more videos. God bless.